All right, a very good evening to you. Welcome along to Friday Night's Off the Ball. It's Jerry Gilroy here with you all the way until 9 o'clock this evening. On the way, very shortly, we're going to be joined by the former Ireland International and European Cup winner, Mark Lawrence, and to help preview Liverpool against Man City, which is, of course, live on Off the Ball this Sunday afternoon. Going to be up to Dundalk a little bit later on as well with some more highlights from this week's Virgin Media Sports Roadshow with Niall Quinn, Keith Andrews and Damien Delaney. Then from 8 o'clock, Jack and Paddy Kennedy, the brothers, were going to be in the studio alongside myself and Johnny Ward for this week's edition of Friday Night Racing. Before all that, though, tonight we're giving you the chance to win a pair of tickets to the motorsport show, which is happening in the RDS on November the 23rd and the 24th. The show includes the live runway, where spectators can view some of the world's most spectacular cars and many other attractions besides. To win, simply answer the following question. Which team are the reigning Formula One Constructors Champions? Text the word MOTOR, your name and your answer, and send that message to 53106. You can win those tickets, and you'll also go into Sunday's draw for a pair of two-day grandstand tickets for the 2020 London E-Prix with flights and accommodation in a four-star hotel. So a weekend in London to look forward to as the overall prize. It's all with thanks to the Motorsport Show at the RDS on November 23rd and 24th. See motorsportshow.com for more information. Now, let's turn our attention to the weekend's football. I'm delighted to say Mark Lawrence is on the line. Mark, good evening to you. How are you doing? I'm all good, thank you very much. Yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this game because mm. we, we, we bang on about title deciders again and again and again. And in this instance, it doesn't actually... It's too early in the season for it to be a title decider, but it's a proper, proper big game between two great sides. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> just the way that, that Liverpool, <clears throat> excuse me, have been performing of late, um, I'm I'm really not one, as you know, that w- would ever go early in terms of thinking who could possibly win the league, apart from the fact it'd be one of these two teams. But I, I do think with Liverpool this season, there, there are so many things happening for them uh, and against other teams like Manchester City that. I do think they'll win it, barring obviously a massive kind of injury problem and list. Um, just every time they play, they seem to be able to find a way to win. And uh, I quite fancy Liverpool to beat Manchester City on uh, on Sunday. Right. I, I, I think, uh, what's the basis? Like, what, What's giving you that confidence? Or, or the doubt in Man City? Or is it um, belief in, in what Liverpool both. are doing? Right. I would go, I would go both. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, City have been brilliant for two years. But, but I think the season we've seen... The, They've had a few kind of hiccups, bumps in the road, whatever you will, in terms of descriptive. And they're not playing that well. I think all the players, listen, they've got outstanding players. They're an outstanding team. But a lot of the players, apart, you might say, from Sterling generally, haven't really hit the hit the heights that reg- on that uh, regular basis. And Liverpool haven't been playing kind of great, but you never play great when you go on to win the league anyway. But w- what they're doing, we saw at home against Leicester, we saw away against Aston Villa and... They are just finding a way to win, and I think that's far more important if you're going to win the league rather than playing brilliant every week and crushing every single team that comes up against you. Yeah, because there's been a few doubts about how Liverpool have been playing that have been talked about fairly regularly in the media over the last while. Mm. Salah's form, but it turns out he's got an ankle injury, and then the fact that they've conceded goals on such a regular basis has been the stick to beat beat them with. But I think Nathan had a stat this morning on OTBAM that they've been behind five times in games at Anfield this season and they've gone on to win all of them. Or the last five times that they've been behind in games, they've also gone on to win them, which is a really amazing statistic when you think about it. Well, I'm not the biggest stats fan, but I think think that's the best stat you can ever, ever have. Um, You know, I was fortunate to play in in enough teams at Liverpool where we won it five times in in the seven years, but... There, there, were, there were many occasions one year we were 14th at Christmas or Boxing Day or something. But what happens then is you, you, you get like, you start to get the results and then you get, obviously, you, you get a kind of inner strength and an inner belief and then a, a little bit more resolve thinking, do you know what? No matter how bad we, badly we play, we can, we can beat teams. And I think our team was very much of, of that way where you know that Ian Russell, Kenny Douglas would, would, would conjure up a goal from nowhere. So that's the way that Liverpool are. Um, and if you if you look at Liverpool generally in terms of maybe their midfield three, they're, they're, they're far more supportive to the back four than they are the front three. It's almost like let the front three go on there and, and forage and, and get the goals and create the chances. Obviously, you're going to need goals from other places as well, which which we know all about. But that's the way that Liverpool are. And I just, while, you know, conceding goals will, will, will drive Klopp a little bit mad, I mean, the end result for him is the fact that they keep winning. What would you rather have a few clean sheets and therefore draw a couple or, or really not play that well, concede the odd goal, but keep winning the games? And I think 
that's the problem and the difference between Liverpool now. So it's not a problem for them. It's a problem for Man City. But that's the difference between Liverpool this season as opposed to last season for me. I, it, I, I understand the question, but which which would you rather have? I guess if you're a manager, you wouldn't feel like these are necessarily things that are um, in competition with each other. You should be able to have clean sheets and you should also be able to win games. Why aren't yeah. they able to keep clean sheets at the moment? What's the issue? Well, I, I, don't, I, just, I just don't think as a unit, um, in terms of the back four, that, that they're playing that well again. They've, been, they've all made mistakes, even, even somebody as majestic as, uh, as, as Van Dijk has made mistakes. I think also as well that um, that you just you have a, you know not quite on the same form as last season. Um, we know the fullbacks sort of roll forward all all the games, and maybe you know, you know teams have got in a little bit behind them sometimes. But it's 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 just really not an issue. And you know players they don't kind of read the papers and watch the telly that often in terms of when they've played. It's just a case of you, you just keep going and. I think the thing with it is, is, is if you really seriously tinkered now, Klopp, and I, you, you won't do, but if you really seriously tinkered, you'd probably make them a little bit better defensively. But if that takes something away from the other end, you know, the end where obviously you score the goals and win the games, what's the point? Yes, he'll be frustrated. But he was not sitting there thinking, oh, we're conceded again. He's look, probably looking at the league table very quick and go, oh, we're still six points, eight points clear, you know, all, all those kind of things. So... It, it, it's not a massive problem to them as long as they're able to keep coming back in games and winning games. Uh, part of me wonders sometimes if, if a team as successful as this Liverpool team have been occasionally find themselves needing a little bit of a kick to get into matches. Not to suggest that they're in any way unprofessional or that they take games for mm. granted, but just that sometimes a punch in the mouth w- awakens a puncher, a fighter in the middle of a fight, and he goes, actually, you know what, I better, I better just knuckle down here. Like the Villa goal last week, for example. Yep. I mean, they killed Villa. They absolutely battered Villa until they scored, and then they continued to batter them after that. So they were clearly mm. the better team. But sometimes in those situations, you're the European Cup champions, and this is a team who've just been promoted. It's not always yep. the easiest thing to get up for. No, 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 it isn't. And, and people kind of say, well, how, co- how come it isn't? You know, you might have three or four days of preparation. You're all extremely good players, in some cases, world-class players. Why can't you turn it on and off like it's that? Because you can't. It, it, it's absolutely, totally impossible. I think it was, it was Mike Tyson, wasn't it, when the, the, the boxing writers were saying to him about, you know, somebody being unbeaten. He said, well, you know, what, what's he like when he gets smashed in the face, which is what you're alluding to. How does he react? And I think that's the thing with this Liverpool team. They've reacted not just positively, but they've reacted in the fact that they've won every single game and come back. And you know that for, that for me is is the ultimate way that you win the league. I mean, City first year they won it, they were battering people four, five, six, and seven, and it was like absolute sensational football, etc. But it, it's gone less and less and less, and that that's what really convinces me to make me think that Liverpool will win it this year is because the way Liverpool are and the way that City are. A little bit where they're never quite sure at the moment. Pep Guardiola, when he turns his team out to play in a game, what he's going to get. He knows he's got great players, but he's had a few occasions in games that we've seen already where they've not really been at it. Now, you know, it's like, well, how do you explain that? Well, possibly you don't. It's just the way that football is. And yet, you know, Liverpool with, with all these fantastic results, and they're not worried about, you know, they don't want. If, if someone says, oh, you were average at the weekend, so what? They win. Would you rather be brilliant every week, as I said before, and maybe not win the one or two games where they've gone through, or, or actually win those games? And I think the latter is definitely way forward. Given given everything we've said here, and there's only been that um, one draw in the first eleven games, mm. it's going to be important to see what happens when they do eventually have a defeat. You know, maybe they are the next invincibles, and maybe they go through the season unbeaten. And fair play if they do, but it's more mm. likely than not that they will lose a game. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens when they do lose that. It would be much better if that game was against a bad team than a good team, if it was just a, oh, we can write that off. But if City were to beat them this weekend, then suddenly the tight race is right back on and, and their their gap disappears almost. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, see, I think it's worse if City beat them because not just the fact that, that, that the gap obviously decreases, but also the fact that you know City came and beat them. And you know if, if they beat them comfortably and Liverpool are suddenly thinking, hold on a minute, then there's that kind of question that you're asking yourself and obviously other members of the team thinking actually are we that good but you're, you're absolutely right I mean you know if they have to lose to a game uh, to a team like Watford or a Norwich or, or one of those teams you know you can just look at it and just go 
you know what, bad day at the office, let's forget about it. And I think that's one of Klopp's strengths, to be honest with you, because, you know, he comes in after games and games that have drawn, and now you drop two points. He went, yeah, we dropped two points. He said, we'll never get them back. He said, so it's not really worth talking about. We look forward to the next game. And then we, 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 we know, it, you know, everybody says, oh, that's all players ever say. But to be honest with you, that's all you ever do because it, it, it is like a hamster wheel. You're just on it all the time, all the time, and occasionally you fall off it. I mean, look, it's a great analogy because uh, they, they're on that hamster wheel of winning games at the moment all the way back to mm. last season and you've got to stay on it while you possibly can because the run of form they're in and so whatever, whatever it takes to win the game. I, I'm interested, cause you said you won five leagues in seven years and there was definitely the, the one where you were miles behind at, at, um, yeah. at Christmas time. Were, was there a league that you raced off into a lead, played really well and then had a wobble? Uh, yeah, 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 definitely. I think... Uh... I think the year we, um, I think the year we won the double, Everton were favourites to win it, and, and they they had a, they had a bad day. I think it was I don't know whether it's somewhere like Oxford, two two games from the end of the season. It was nip and tuck, but they were they were probably they'd had a better season than us, to be honest with you. And um, they suddenly had a bad day. We won, and then we just kind of I think we got a point in front, and we knew then if we won our last two games, it might even be in our last game that we won the league and. Lo and behold, we did. And, of course, the next week was a cup final against Everton. And we beat them in that. I mean, to be honest with you, they quite easily could have won the double that year and we could not have complained. And, of course, in the end, we've ended up winning just because we had this belief that, you know, we can make things happen and something will happen to your opposition teams. Where did that confidence come from? Um, I would say the confidence comes from... You, you, you sit in the dressing room, especially on the big games where... You know, you're extremely nervous and you're kind of you're grasping all kinds of things, thinking, oh, you know, what team we're playing today, I'm not quite sure they're brilliant, this, this fellow and all that. And then you look round your own dressing room, you look round, look at the players, and we'd, we'd in our day, we'd, our day, we'd go, I'll look at Suness, I mean, was there a better player in that position in the world at the time? I'm not sure there was. I mentioned Rush before, Kenny. Kenny was a, just basically a genius, which one that comes, a, comes along every once in 10 or 20 years. And we just had that. Apart from now, we had some really outstanding players. We had youth, we had energy, uh, we had belief. Um, you know, and at home we felt completely unbeatable. But it's probably from that. That's that's where you take the kind of strength when you look at those guys. And you know, me and Hanson, we we say to each other, "Well, you know what? I tell you, if we manage to keep a clean sheet here today, Rushy will score, or Kenny will come up with some magic, or Sunes would like power one in from thirty yards, and that kind of thing." And and lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and I guess if you're in Liverpool at the moment, you look at the front three and you think you'll put yeah. your front three up against any front three in the world. Salah's recent form, obviously, came in for a bit of criticism. It emerged this week, though, that he'd been nursing an ankle injury, which makes his performances seem kind of heroic. You know, still yeah. showing up, still scoring, still creating, still being a pain in the ass for the opposition. Yeah. Um, he's just he's a world-class player. I think, I think sometimes what it is is People just expect that every time he, he cuts inside from the right and shoots, he's, he's going to score. Um, Salah misses an awful lot of chances when you watch him play. And, and also, he can be quite selfish at times. And that, he had that little spat, I think, didn't he, with Firmino? Um, or with Mane, I should say. But it doesn't really matter because, you know, eventually, if you give, if you give him enough of the ball, he, he will score. He, he will miss a lot of chances, but he'll score. And Mane, I, I think... I think along with Virgil van Dijk, that Marnie is Liverpool's best player. I, I think he's unbelievably, seriously underrated. He's as strong as an ox. He doesn't get sh shaken off the ball. He doesn't really get injured. Uh, he's now started to offer and, and score more goals. And he's up there with the likes of Salah. And I just, you know, people keep saying, oh, what if one of them goes to Real Madrid? I'd say the only person I would take in that team, apart from van Dijk, would, would be, would be, would be, would be uh, Marnie because... I just think he's absolutely brilliant and, and probably doesn't get as much praise as the likes of uh, Salah and maybe even Firmino. Yeah, which probably means he ends up staying for a little bit longer. Just a reminder, yeah. <laughs> a reminder to everybody, our football coverage is brought to you with thanks to Paddy Power. The news came through today that Ederson is out. Now, Guardiola says in the press conference, you've got to take him at his word. This isn't some weird mind games that you don't really see that often, but... Um, he said he's not playing on Sunday and that Claudio Bravo is going to play. Bravo's just okay. nowhere near as good as as Ederson. This is a, a massive swing in favour of Liverpool again, surely, isn't it? 
Yeah, I would say so. And I think, I think the other thing, I mean, we know that, that City have struggled defensively. We know the injury to Laporte. Um, Otamendi's been, well, basically poor for the, for the majority of the season when he's played. But I don't, I don't even remember. Remember, did Liverpool beat them 4-3 two or three years ago, if, if my memory It was definitely only one goal in it, but it, it was a time where Liverpool just went for City from the first minute. That's what I think they'll do this Sunday afternoon. I, I think it'll be one of those. We know how good they can press, but it will it will be double press from Liverpool, and the manager will have them absolutely, totally wound up. Um, that, and that's another thing why I think they will win the game because I just don't think Man City's defence is under pressure. It's capable of, of, of keeping a clean sheet and not conceding. City went hyper defensive against Liverpool last year at Anfield in the, mm. the, the same fixture. The fullbacks were withdrawn, and it was a very unusual, unpep like performance. And we didn't see it too often. Saw it again, really, in the Champions League against um, Spurs, oddly enough, and that didn't work out for him either. So, no. if you're City, what are you doing? Even now that Bravos and goals, do you do the same thing again and take the draw and keep the gap at six points, or is the best way to attack this Liverpool team who have been conceding goals? I think. I think. You, you, I think you've got to, to attack. I mean, it may well be, you know, as you described, I think they'll get forced back anyway. But, you know, do you want De Bruyne defending? Do you want Bernardo Silva defending? You know, do you want all these really gifted players like Sterling having to defend rather than be causing mayhem in the other half? And it's easy to say, well, why don't you, do, you know, have a little bit of the two? I don't, they're not that kind of, that kind of side. I think the best way that City can defend against Liverpool for me is by, is by keeping the ball and having the ball because they're absolutely brilliant. And, you know, the number of times that we've seen them play against teams and they've had like 75% of possession. And I think that's the way that they will try and want to go about Sunday because by doing so and, and stopping Liverpool having the ball, Liverpool aren't going to be create the amount of chances that they would need to and would like to create. Yeah. I, and, I mean, you would hope that from Guardiola's perspective, he's learned from the the game against Spurs last year where ultimately they end up yeah. costing themselves through fear of something that actually they were they were better than and uh, you yeah. know, it doesn't feel like they're better than this Liverpool team at the moment but it certainly feels like their best chance of, of pulling something out of this is to is to go gung-ho a word about Sterling because he has matured into the, the player that I think all the Liverpool fans feared he might be capable of becoming as he was uh, as he was leaving Liverpool he is just in that elite elite bracket in world football at the moment maybe one tier below the very best but very capable yeah. of, of getting up there and flaring up again. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And I think, <clears throat> I think when he left Liverpool, I thought, you know what, it's a great, it's a great sell from Liverpool. I didn't think he really understood the game. He was kind of what I would call a reactive player. The ball came in reactive to it. He didn't necessarily know what he was, ex- what was expected of him in the team. He's now, I mean, it's, it's not just the fact that, that that he always produces something, something for somebody else. He started to score the goal. His finishing has been absolutely fantastic, which I didn't necessarily think he would ever grow into. But no, he's, he's, he's been outstanding. Um, I totally agree with you. In fact, he, he's not up where he messes and Ronaldo's yet, but he's still a young kid as well. And I think he, I think he now understands and knows a his role in the team, what's is expected of him. But once you start producing that end product as well, and with his, with the fantastic pace that he's got, he's almost unplayable at days. Well, he is unplayable on days, isn't he? We know that. There's a six-point lead at the moment. It'd be nine points, obviously, if they win at the weekend. It's a massive, massive gap. It's a, a huge prize on offer. Sometimes when we see teams who are as good as Liverpool and the, the big prizes on offer, you're happy enough with the draw because ultimately you've kept your opponents at bay. But a game like this at the weekend is a chance to, to deliver something of a knockout blow. It's very early in the league for us to be saying that. 12 games in to be saying that the league is over. It's, it's kind of ridiculous because we've seen it happen in world football. But... Yeah. A nine-point lead with this team is an amazing lead to be taken in after 12, 12 games as well. It's very yeah. close to game over. It certainly would break the spirit of this Man City team. So it's a huge prize. How do they make sure that they're not in any way cowed or, or scared of, of what the, the prize is? Um, well, I don't, I don't think they will be. And I think, obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, winning the Champions League last, well, I think it was early June, was it? Winning the Champions League last June would, would A, would, would give you that belief. And especially if you think about the way that Liverpool played uh, in Madrid against Tottenham, where it was probably one of the worst performances for the last three months of that season. But but again, it's this thing where they managed to get the job done. I don't, I don't, I don't think, you know, there's a fear in terms of fear of being successful. I think there's always, there's a fear in terms of fear of being unsuccessful. So, I don't really see a problem with him. I think, you know, the, the manager is is probably 
Uh, one of the best man managers that I've seen for a long, long time. Um, no great expectations about the players, um, but they're driven. They're absolutely, totally driven. I was on there on Tuesday night when they played Genk, and you know he just he just so wasn't happy with the performance, even though he made six changes. But that's the way that he is, Klopp. And I think I think that drive is a massive thing at Anfield and all his players respect him and all his players play for him and he just he just got it absolutely totally right at the moment yeah alright Mark enjoy the game this weekend thanks a million for joining us today pleasure thanks it's Mark Lawrence and giving us his thoughts there on the game of the weekend it was obviously a prediction for Liverpool to win that if you missed it if you just joined us uh, you're tuned here to Off the Ball on News Talk this evening and um, just a couple of quick things to remind you about that game is live here on Off the Ball on Sunday afternoon it kicks off at half past four Liverpool against Manchester City Nathan and Stephen Kelly are on duty for that one a little bit earlier on uh, Brian Kerr is going to be the co-com as Manchester United take on Brighton and Hove Albion and I think uh, Steve was doing that game with him um, so that one kicks off at two o'clock on Sunday's Off the Ball and I want to play you this as well it's Jurgen Klopp talking in the press conference today he was asked about the fact that for the very first time Sean Cox will return to Anfield since he sustained those horrific injuries in an attack outside the ground in 2018 he's going to be guests of the club at the game against City obviously he was attacked by Roma supporters before the Champions League game in April 2018 here's what club had to say today in the press conference when he was asked about it it's going to be a memorable occasion at City and Liverpool when they meet it up it always is but for, for Sean Cox and his family uh, particularly memorable and the, the awful events of what happened to him and his road to recovery it's really it's something that, that resonates with all Liverpool fans absolutely so when when it happened to Sean it was probably really it was the lowest point for me in my in, in the whole time in, in, in at Liverpool uh, because that's Something like this should not happen in general in life, but it should not happen around a football game as well. It should happen around a football game. And so the law, obviously, what Sean has and his family has for this club, have for this club um, and for football, um, I hope that it gave him, it gave them all strength and power in the time, in the recovery time. And we all know it's not finished yet, and we all know it's still a long way to go. Um, but having this, we can give him the opportunity, them the opportunity, to come back to watch a really big game that he wants to do. That that's for me, coming from a real low point, is one of my highlights since I'm here because it's so nice, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope we can organise it that I can see him for a second before the game, or a couple of minutes um, before the game. I really want to, um, and yeah. Because how, how how the Liverpool community dealt then with it, I hope that he feels that how that, he, that we don't only sing, we never walk alone, we really live that. And um, in this specific um, situation, it was very important to show that. And you hope I really hope they, they they felt that the whole time and will feel that in the future when we can help him with his recovery um, as well. Um, Jurgen Klopp there talking about Sean Cox being at the game this weekend and we'll bring you more on that on Sunday's Off the Ball with uh, Nathan being at the game live we'll bring you more details on that on Sunday as well so um, that's the opening part of our show in the books for you we're going to take a quick break we'll be back bringing you some more of our Virgin Media Sports Roadshow from Dundalk on Monday night and then in the next hour we've got Friday Night Race and a great one today with uh, two racing brothers for the first time we've had two brothers in together on the show uh, that's coming your way after 8 o'clock. In the meantime, if you have anything you want to get off your chest, you can text the show on 53106, or of course you can tweet us at Off the Ball. You're listening to Off the Ball on Newstalk. Back after these.